as you see in the bulletin, our scripture today is from the fifth chapter of Mark's gospel, beginning with verse 21. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Sometimes it's difficult to believe or to explain what we may call divine healing. Why does it not happen? Or why does it happen? Other times there is no doubt that there has been a genuine miracle of healing. You can think of instances you know which fit into one of these categories. Our scripture today is two instances of divine healing in the ministry of Jesus. Yet, while they may seem miraculous, I have chosen to call them all in a day's work. Yet, for Jesus, the divine Son of God, these were all in a day's work. He had come to meet people's needs and did so wherever the opportunity afforded itself. His work was to spread compassion to the needy, to bring wholeness where there was hurt. So when things like these happened and Jesus moved quietly on, reaching out to the hurting and needy, let us never forget that he is still among us through his Holy Spirit, reaching out in whatever way is appropriate to those who seek his loving touch. Jesus was in Galilee, surrounded by enormous crowds. The word had gotten out about his feeding of the people and also the healing he had performed. So it is fair to say that they were there for whatever they could get. Doubtless, the pressure of these crowds and their expectations, even demands, had tired Jesus out. 
for he was also son of man. So he had the disciples to get into one of their fishing boats to travel across the beautiful little lake, which we call the Sea of Galilee. He rested in the back of the boat while they traveled, but they could not escape the crowds. The Sea of Galilee is narrow enough at the upper end that the crowds could walk around it to meet Jesus on the other side. So when he got there, they were waiting on more miracles or waiting to be fed. There was nothing to do but get out of the boat and move along with the crowd. Our story tells of a woman who had been sick 12 years. Remember that 12 was the number of indefinite length. So we really don't know how long the poor woman had suffered. She had spent all her money on doctors to no avail. That almost makes this story a modern one, doesn't it? Doubtless this woman had heard of Jesus healing others. In desperation, she decided that if she could only touch his garment, she would be healed. That was, wasn't only desperation, it was an exercise of faith. So we see her as she forces her way through the crowd until she is close enough to reach out and touch his cloak. Sure enough, faith paid off. She could immediately tell that she had been healed. But the one thing she was not counting on was that Jesus also knew that his healing power had gone out. He wanted to know who had touched him. He looked around and said, who touched my clothes? The disciples almost laughed at him. They said something like, Lord, in this crowd, you want to know who touched you? Come on now. Here's a lesson for us. Look at the sensitivity of Jesus. Just as Jesus was sensitive to the touch of the woman, he is sensitive to our needs so that when we take our needs to him in prayer, touching his garment, if you please, he feels and responds. Suppose someone had touched you in that crowd. You would think nothing of it, but Jesus immediately knew that someone needed him. Also, the woman somehow knew she could not escape with anonymity. So it is with us. If we have needs that Jesus can meet, we should know that he will understand and respond. Perhaps the woman might have expected Jesus to react angrily. Instead, he said gently to her, your faith has made you whole. So we're instructed to turn to Jesus in faith with our needs. I can picture that woman walking with Jesus from that point on. So while we may not achieve the same results the woman did, we can be sure we will receive the same care and concern from Jesus and his love will carry us through. Remember the old hymn that says, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. So our faith can make us whole in one spirit. And to the woman, Jesus utters the most important word, Go in peace. So we must remember that whatever our situation is, if we will have faith, Jesus will help us find peace. Now let's look back at the story. Before the incident with the woman, Jesus had another encounter. This one was with a man, we are told, who was the ruler of the synagogue in the nearby town. In other words, he was the head man the leader in worship, the leader in keeping the law, and yet he came to Jesus for help. That did not win him any points with the Jewish authorities. Many of them wanted to get rid of Jesus or at least discredit him. Now one of their own turns to Jesus for help. The situation was that Jairus' 12-year-old daughter was dying. Now let me ask you parents, won't, won't you do anything possible to see that your child is well and having a good life? <clears throat> and
And so it was with Jairus. Who cared what others thought? Here was a chance for his daughter to recover. So Jairus falls at Jesus' feet and explains the situation. Once again, Jesus understands and responds. He calls his inner circle, Peter, James, and John, and says, we're going home with this man. It would be hard to imagine who was more surprised. The disciples, Jairus, or the crowd. Once again, Jesus' kindness and compassion shine through. Once again, he does the unexpected because of need. We must never forget that Jesus stands by with kindness and compassion to respond to our needs. Before Jesus can go with Jairus, the situation with the woman intervenes. But as soon as that is resolved, Jesus picks up again with Jairus. Jesus does not forget our needs. Before the group can get to Jairus' house, a messenger comes saying the girl is already dead. No need to come. But once again, the power of Jesus shines forth. He turns to Jairus and says tenderly, Don't be afraid, just believe. Here again is the call for faith such as the woman had exhibited. We must remember again the power and the importance of faith. With Jesus' encouragement, the group moves on. When they get to Jairus' house, the morning has already begun. And these people knew how to mourn. It was almost a riot. Jesus steps into the middle of it and says, What's the matter with you? She's not dead. She's only sleeping. The people were stunned. Then they began to laugh at Jesus. The world always seeks to laugh at our faith, but we must continue to believe whatever happens. Jesus and his group get the parents of the girl and close everyone else out of the house. It seems to me that Jesus was recognizing the deep need and the fact that they had exercised faith by coming to him. Jesus goes into the room where the girl is and takes her by the hand. No self-respecting Jew would do that for fear of becoming unclean. But Jesus was more concerned about these people and their need than about his legal standing. Tenderly, he says, little girl, get up. Some commentators say, he says, little lamb, get up. And she does. Now, Jesus does a strange thing. He instructs the group not to tell anyone what has happened. This reflects again on the need of faith. Jesus knew that when the story got out, the crowd would come for healing, not out of faith, but simply to get well. So we are told that when we are in need of God's help, We are to go to him in faith, believing that whatever happens will be for the best. So these two stories from the ministry of Jesus teach us the importance of faith. We cannot say that healing will always take place. We know that not to be true. But we can know that Jesus will walk with us through the trials of life, and that will be enough. Let us never forget that those things which seem to us so miraculous, are to Jesus all in a day's work. May we pray. Lord, we thank you for these examples from the life of Jesus. We pray that we shall be faithful to live in faith. In Jesus' name, amen.